Okay, good morning all. Uh, thank you for uh, arriving in the classroom as scheduled. Uh, today we are going to talk about the uh, evaluation on your three minutes presentation. And also we're going to talk about the styles of uh, designing a slide presentation. Uh, and without further ado, I guess we're just going to uh, show the uh, list of things that I've discovered that we basically uh, see during the three minutes uh, presentation that, that uh, for uh, some of you looks kind of obvious uh, during the talk, but sometimes uh, the mistakes are so uh, negligible that the evaluation need not to be uh, that strict. Okay, so let me, let me share the uh, screen first. Okay, uh, so basically the uh, the, uh, the the work that you already show in the three minutes presentation uh, is tremendously good. Uh, uh, it's just that uh, some of you need some kind of um, uh, improvements for later talks because in two weeks time we're going to have the uh, 10 minutes presentation session and therefore uh, improvement for your next uh, talk will be important to do uh, and then so that we could use our uh, for so that the the, the result for your uh, final presentation later on will be come from the improvement or the continuous improvement that you always did from one session to another uh, so here uh, the, uh, the overall uh, evaluation is that students show good progress on presenting scientific topic, and most of you uh, obey the time limit that was given during the uh, during the uh, session itself. So uh, most of you are under three minutes, uh, but, uh, even though there are one or two people who are uh, talk and take uh, more time in delivering their presentation. Uh, but most of you done a very well job in keeping the time limit. Uh, however, okay, these are the uh, evaluation that needs to be pointed out. Uh, first is the usage of uh, proper grammar in certain uh, spoken communication. It is true that in spoken communication, the usage of grammar is not that fixed as those who are dealing with a, a scientific paper or a scientific um, article. Okay. Uh, however, in oral communications or in the spoken in 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 a spoken communication, there are some things that needs to be obeyed, especially the things that are obviously is already passed. So you need to use the past tense, etc. And then something that is still continuing uh, from a certain time in the past until now, uh, it means that you need to have the uh, uh, continuing verb or continuous verb <coughs> use in your in your presentation, for example. So uh, those are the things that need that, that since we are not an active English speakers, obviously, uh, we, uh, we, we, we didn't think about that too much because uh, most of us think that uh, the way that we want to send the message across or how we are, uh, um, how we are communicating our ideas and uh, study 
as uh, efficient as possible. Uh, that might be the things that kind of kind of obvious in our mind, especially for us who are not uh, an active English speaker. However, since this is or since this class is basically an opportunity for you to uh, make that uh, uh, chance to speak in English and communicating about or talking about scientific uh, topic, uh, then uh, we need to keep improving ourselves and keep uh, motivating ourselves to become better and better by learning uh, the proper way or the proper words that needs to be uh, that needs to be uh, used in a certain uh, in a certain uh, situation or in certain uh, occasions, for example. Okay, so that is the uh, grammar in uh, spoken communications, and it's also part of the improvements of the subject and verb agreement. So sometimes uh, I found that uh, the agreement between a singular object or a singular subject, it does not correspond with the singular verb that you use. Sometimes uh, you use um, a plural uh, verb for a for a singular subject, uh, and and some examples is also present uh, during the presentation. But uh, since most of them are basically spoken words, okay. Uh, so the so the uh, the uh, example that is given here is not that. Um, it's not that uh, factual in terms of the, uh, it is not written in your slides, okay? It's not that obvious because uh, because well, probably what I hear is something that is kind of different with uh, some of you here. Uh, and so the spoken words sometimes is not that obvious. So uh, in order for you to have a clearer uh, pronunciation, it means that you need to practice more because we are using the language that are not our uh, our uh, language that is used daily. So, uh, so practicing in English is a must so that the pronunciation becomes more, becomes uh, clearer. Uh, and, I, and I, as the evaluator, can uh, hear whether you are using the correct uh, verb for a certain subject, etc., and so on. Uh, and also, sometimes uh, the usage of a certain verb determine versus determining uh, is kind of uh, misleading. Okay, so uh, first, so uh, I, I I forgot who is using this word, but I uh, hear that the presenter is using, uh, oh, uh, 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 here, uh, the, the, uh, I, I, I guess the problem is to how we use to determine and determining. And, uh, uh, and then sometimes we also use uh, uh, for so okay so sometimes we use to determine and for determining so these are uh, things that uh, we sometimes use to uh, emphasize that this method is used to analyze or to look for a certain uh, properties etc and so on uh, but uh, but sometimes we kind of mix the usage of to determine and for determining. So, for example, uh, well, so for example, the uh, usage of to determining is not correct. The, the correct one is for determining. And then, uh, if you're going to use to something, the verb is uh, uh, using the, uh, the the verb needs to be uh, changed into the uh, simple uh, verb, not with the continuous verb. And then uh, another example, when we are talking about 
uh, gambling as a noun. It is not gamble because gamble itself is a verb. Okay, it's a predicate. But gambling, gambling it can be, uh, uh, well, gambling itself is a noun. Okay, it's a noun. So it can be used as an object or used as an, as a, as an object or as a subject. So uh, when we are talking uh, gambling as a, uh, as an object or a subject, then we need to use the act of gamble as a noun, which is gambling. Okay, so, uh, so it is just like to, it's just, it, it is the same uh, problem with prediction and predicting. Okay, so predicting or predict itself is a verb which is basically the predicate or the things that is, uh, uh, which is, uh, or the act of someone uh, doing something, okay? Uh, where prediction itself is the, uh, is the uh, noun, is the noun form of the act of uh, predicting itself, okay? So uh, here, uh, well, this is probably due to the fact that, uh, uh, the presenter is not preparing enough in, well, it's not practicing enough and uh, probably forgot to be, uh, between the uh, uh, the verb form or the noun form of a certain words. And so this one can be avoided in later presentation uh, by reviewing first about the thing that you need to deliver on that specific time of presentation and also by so uh, if you are a little bit have that type of not strict to a certain script or strict to the certain flow and you and you are the type who are a little bit spontaneous please do uh, uh, remember that the uh, spontaneity need to be also practiced so that the specific word that correct uh, in terms of the meaning of a certain sentence uh, is properly is properly de delivered because gam because a noun and a verb is two different have two different uh, meaning even though it is uh, related to a certain action or a certain uh, 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 object or a certain uh, thing <clears throat> that is act of an object. So uh, that, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, so uh, please keep in mind that <clears throat> uh, using the correct form of word is necessary for you so that the audience uh, will understand the, even though probably for us who are uh, knew about the language or the English language itself uh, in the minimum form, uh, using gam using a, a certain word in noun or verb, uh, as long as the message is delivered, it's okay for us, but still, if you're going to become a better presenter, uh, knowing how, knowing when we use noun or knowing when we use verb is also necessary for that, okay? It is just as the um, it's, it's just that uh, if we are going to improve ourselves and to become a better presenter or an experienced presenter uh, or a or a uh, person who are learning how to become a good presenter, it means that you need to know uh, when to use now and also when to use certain. For, okay, and also uh, knew how to use to determine or for determining, et cetera. Okay. Uh, next is the common problem. Uh, since uh, we are not, so, well, since uh, we are not a, uh, since we are not an English speaking countries and also uh, the, uh, probably the, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, we are not learn how to pronounce a certain word into a cert into a certain rules or into a certain um, uh, 
uh, intonation, etc., and so on during our uh, school days, uh, the pronunciation of, a, of certain words needs to be fixed and it needs to be uh, fixed into a better, uh, into a proper form. For example, here I hear the word overlap is spoken as overlip, okay? Because uh, it is not correct to say overlip. The, the correct one is to overlap or overlap. So, and then when we are talking about the medium whose properties are uh, the same or constant or doesn't have irregularities or it doesn't uh, have too much complexity or only have one uh, uh, one type of behavior, etc. and so on, we call it as homogeneous, not homogen. Homogen is the Indonesian word for homogeneous. So uh, instead of using homogen, we use homogeneous, okay? Because, ho because homogeneous itself is an adjective of a, a certain thing or a certain material that has uh, only one uh, type of behavior, okay? Uh, and it's uniform and it's behaving uh, uh, in a simple, in the simplest manner, etc. and so on. So the word for that or the adjective word for that is homogeneous, not homogen. And then the pronunciation of discretize, because I hear some students or some presenters uh, working on computational methods. And do they need to discretize their uh, computational domain? And so uh, the pronunciation of discretize is discretize, not discretis. Okay, this discretis is the uh, is the incorrect way or the wrong way to pronounce discretize. And then uh, I hear a student who called Monash University as Monash University, it is incorrect. And then the other one is to uh, point the frequency range of, uh, I think this is from an MT or magnetotelaric uh, presentation. I not remember which one it was, uh, but someone is uh, pointing, uh, uh, someone is, uh, is, is speaking the one millihertz uh, frequency as 0 0.001 hertz, okay? So instead of using uh, 0 0.001 hertz, which is uh, physically is correct, but it is properly to just use one millihertz or one microhertz or one nanohertz when we talk about the range of frequency uh, used in a certain EM uh, wave or EM uh, induction problem. Okay, so instead of uh, uh, instead of using, for example, one thousand hertz, we can use one kilohertz or a million hertz as a one megahertz. It's, it's, this, it's, it's, it's the same problem or the same thing uh, that uh, we need to change in order to become a better presenter. Okay. Uh, the fourth thing that uh, needs to be addressed here is when we are uh, talking in a international audience, it is better for us to use the specific English uh, names for uh, Indonesian uh, places, for example, uh, Provinsi Jawa Tengah. When we are talking about a certain uh, studies conducted in Provinsi Jawa Tengah, if the uh, if the conference itself is a is an international uh, conference, then we need to uh, change it into a Central Java Province instead. So this is the pro this is the uh, proper way to. Uh, to 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 um, uh, to mention about that province instead of province Jawa Tengah. Uh, but if the um, if the uh, 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 if the conference or the seminar itself was uh, held by national institution, uh, sometimes we can use Provinsi Jawa Tengah uh, if we uh, sure that the audience 
of our talk or of our seminar mainly is coming from 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 the diversity or or from the uh, national audience okay from in, uh, or uh, uh, they, they they understand to uh, uh, they understand the, the, the usage of the Indonesian language in certain degree. So uh, using province Jawa Tengah is okay, but if we are talking or if we are presenting in international uh, audience, then uh, using a specific names for provinces, for regency, for cities, uh, it is uh, common to use the English names for it. Uh, that is, but, but however, it is not uh, uh, the same when it applies to the uh, uh, university name. For example, when we're talking about ITB itself, uh, we can just use ITB instead of Institute Technology Bandung or Bandung Institute of Technology. We can use just ITB uh, to name our uh, institution uh, because uh, because ITB itself uh, written in, in uh, written as uh, Institute of Technology Bandung is is a uh, institution that is already acknowledged by the international community. So uh, that so the application of the English names for university and certain provinces and uh, regencies. In Indonesia, is kind of different because we can still use the proper, uh, we can still use the Indonesian name as our affiliation, but for uh, for a specific location uh, or for specific uh, regency, uh, province, and regions, uh, we can use we can choose to use the English names for it. Okay, so. Uh, the example that I hear during the presentation is that uh, one presenter is using Provinsi Jawa Tengah instead of Central Java. Uh, but if you're going to be, if you, if you're going to uh, talk in full English, then uh, using Central Java Province is the preference. Uh, next is about the closing statement. Whenever you're going to close your uh, presentation. It is uh, customary to say thank you for your attention and I will be hearing for your comments and questions later on after the end of the presentation. Or uh, you just make that statement that uh, thank you all for, thank you for, uh, thank you for listening to the presentation. I will hear to your uh, comment and questions later on. Well, something like that, okay, something like that. So. Uh, instead of just uh, okay, I'm done. Okay, uh, or uh, or or uh, not saying anything about the closing. Uh, uh, then you need to learn how to use a good uh, closing uh, statement or closing remark for your presentation because. Uh, in your uh, thesis, or sorry, in your final project uh, defense itself, you need to learn how to uh, use closing statements uh, in order to in order to uh, tell your examinee or tell your audience that this is the final part or this is the end of my presentation, and. Uh, in a scientific presentation, it is not okay for you to make excuse for, for yourself. Uh, uh, make excuse is that um, sometimes in the Indonesian culture, sometimes we use uh, uh, words or phrases like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just a beginner. Uh, I'm just a student. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not the expert of this. And, uh, uh, well, those are the things that is need to be avoided during presentation. Uh, sorry that you are not ex the expert. Sorry that you are just a beginner. Sorry that you are just a student, etc. and so on. It must not be delivered during a certain presentation. You, the, you, you as the presenter needs to be responsible with the thing that you wrote 
need to be responsible the thing with your with the uh, uh, things that you design that you show in your slide so so to become more uh, accountable uh, to the things that you put in your presentation you don't need you must not feel sorry if you do some mistakes etc and so on because you are responsible for the things that you put in the uh, presentation slide uh, even though, in truth, you are still learning about that thing, for example, you are so uh, even though you are just a student or even though you are uh, obviously not an expert on a certain thing, but you don't need to feel sorry about talking uh, not in uh, not your expertise. Okay? Uh, uh, if you are tasked to deliver something uh, that is uh, required for you to say, then you have to be prepared. You have to be responsible with the thing that you already prepared. Uh, uh, never tell that you are, uh, never tell your excuses that you, that your slice is imperfect or your slide is full of mistakes, et cetera, and so on, because uh, you are accountable, you are responsible with the thing that you uh, add or what you are uh, designed in the uh, presentation slide. So even though it is kind of customary, okay, or it's some kind of a cultural thing in our society in Indonesia to say, um, uh, maaf saya uh, bukan ahlinya, or ma ma mohon maaf saya masih belajar dan lain sebagainya. Uh, there is not the thing uh, common in scientific uh, talk, especially in the international audience or in a professional meeting, for example, when you are when you are uh, working on a certain company, uh, you never say that you are sorry, never say that you are not an expert at certain answer because uh, those people, especially in the companies, expect you to be a qualified person who are hired in that company. So uh, never tell that you are sorry with the incompetence or the 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 the, um, the mistakes that you probably uh, did during the uh, presentation design or the the, the presentation itself. So uh, make sure that you are never use that uh, sorry word for the inconvenience or sorry for the mistakes or for, because it is uh, more on the cultural thing uh, here in Indonesia, but for a general settings, for example, when you are going to talk in a uh, international meeting or an international talk, you need to be confident with the things that you add. So make sure that you knew everything about the uh, thing that you add in the presentation slide that is including the watermark or including the background uh, design that you use. You need to uh, know uh, what is the purpose of using that background, for example, or of using this color, for example, uh, this, uh, this and that. Okay, so, uh, so uh, closing statement, okay, uh, uh, please. For those who, for those of you who need to uh, learn on how to make a closing statement on uh, after you're done with your presentation, please learn about it because there are uh, many examples in YouTube or in the internet on how we use a certain phrases to close our uh, our presentation or our talk, and then uh, never say I'm sorry for being imperfect or I'm sorry for of being not the expert of this talk, etc. Okay, never done that. Okay, uh, the next one uh, from the evaluation is that uh, if you have figures, okay, I know that uh, most of you have figures in their presentation, and I also knew that our time is uh, limited to three minutes, but whenever you put a certain figure in your slide, you need to have time you need to have that uh, 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 necessity to explain about the thing that you have on your figure itself you need to explain well this is the figure of this this and this well some of you done 
a good job in explaining the audience about well this is the figure of of uh, of a certain act and this is the uh, illustration of the of the uh, COVID-19 virus and this is the figure of how is the health system is working in order to uh, in, uh, in order to deal with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic for example uh, uh, so whenever you have that figure on your uh, presentation please spare a time to uh, talk about it because the figure that you show in your slide it is not an accessory okay it is not just it is not there to uh, to be displayed only you need to explain about it you need to uh, talk about it you need to describe why i put this figure in this slide because i want to tell the audience that uh, the importance of this i want to make some kind of a description from uh, uh, via illustration about the process that is occurring in our in my talk, etc. And so on. So whenever you have a certain figure, make sure that you explain carefully about them because the display of your presentation is not for exhibition. It is for explaining a certain thing or a certain process that is uh, part of your uh, presentation. Okay. So if you have figures, please explain. And then for those of you who have soft uh, voice, please speak up, okay? Uh, uh, you can make your microphone a little bit nearer to your mouth, or you just speak loud, okay? You just speak more loudly, okay? So, uh, uh, because uh, if you are uh, speaking in uh, soft voice and it becomes a habit from time to time, when you are dealing with the uh, the examinee of your uh, final project uh, exam, oh, uh, they will told you to speak to speak up to speak up to to have clearer intonation or a clearer pronunciation, etc. And so on. Because if you are mumbling, okay, if you are uh, so uh, so so uh, so if you have soft voice and then when you are talk and when you're explaining about a certain thing uh it's not clear the examiner will think that you are mumbling you are not being decisive with the thing that you're going to talk so uh in order to avoid that please be confident with your uh presentation and put your mic or put your uh uh, mic put your uh, microphone closer to your mouth and then uh, make sure that your gesture is in a positive way, in a positive mood, so that the examinee or the audience itself will know or you are the master of your own talk, for example. Okay, so here are the uh, evaluation that I have from your uh, three minutes uh, presentation session. Hopefully, it will improve your ability uh, in delivering scientific talks later on. So in the past, so, so that in the next two weeks, when we have that 10 minutes presentation, uh, things that already addressed here, it's not, it's not need to be addressed uh, again in after the 10 minutes presentation. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, you will have improvement from here. Uh, so that next time in the 10 minutes and the 15 minutes presentation, these mistakes or this thing, this thing is not going to be uh, occur again in in those presentations. Well, okay, uh, here uh, we already talk about the evaluation. So uh, here we already have our. Uh, we already have our uh, uh, three minute presentation and we also have the uh, literature review or the introduction part of your paper. And, and the next uh, assignment, uh, the upcoming assignment for you is to have that uh, 
presentation slide for 10 minutes uh, talk. Okay, for 10 minutes talk, uh, that's going to be, okay, so this is the portion, I'm not going to show it. So uh, looking at our schedule, we already done the uh, three minutes presentation as we, uh, as we knew, okay, and then uh, the 10 minutes presentation will be done in oh, in November the oh no it's still on on October so we're going to start our 10 minutes presentation on October the 29th okay so for, so here uh, this is where we at at the moment so uh, October the 18th three minute scientific uh, presentation evaluation. We already done that. And then uh, we're going to see on how to create a presentation slide from certain styles. And then the Thursday session will be used to introduce you to certain softwares and application that might be useful in our paper writing and also in uh, presentation designing, uh, which also includes how to import citations. And in next Tuesday, we're going to have our uh, uh, second presenters workshop that I'm going to evaluate. So make sure that your uh, presentation draft is ready by next Tuesday. Okay, so next week's Tuesday, I need you to have your 10 minutes presentation slides draft ready, okay? So that in the Thursday session, we can start our 10 minutes presentation and it will continue up until the next uh, Thursday in November, okay? So uh, here, we're going to spend our three days of uh, sessions uh, for the 10 minutes presentation. So it means that each session, uh, roughly eight students will talk about their topic in 10 minutes. And in this 10 minutes presentation, uh, we're not going to have any uh, question and answer session. And the, uh, and the coverage, of the 10 minutes presentation should be containing the introduction, the methods, and the uh, and the uh, the data uh, that you are gathered, that you are compiled, or that you are analyzing from that certain uh, paper. Okay, so uh, so in 10 minutes present, so in 10 minutes presentation, the coverage of your slide presentation should be covering the two thirds of your uh, scientific topic presentations, okay? So it might not include the analysis, it might not include the conclusion, but it, but it, but it contain the introduction, the method, and also the, the experiment itself. So, uh, so if you have, so uh, when we have that uh, five uh, typical chapter, of our uh, final project. Uh, the first one is the introduction. The second one is the uh, method or the basic theory. And then the third one is the data uh, measurement or the data collection or the, uh, or the uh, computation or the uh, data analysis, et cetera. So, and then the fourth one is the, uh, the fourth one is the analysis. Okay, the fourth one is the analysis and the final one is the conclusion. So the last two parts of your, uh, of your, uh, of your uh, typical presentation or your typical uh, report is not going to be present in the 10 minutes presentation. What you need to do is to make sure that you need to have your background story uh, checked. You have the proper method and you knew how to gather the data or how we employ the certain instrumentation into our 
experiment or how we set up our experiment or how we set up the measure the 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 uh, the, uh, the measuring uh, the measurement uh, system so uh, the coverage is from the introduction the methods or the basic theory and how we collect the data okay uh, well the analysis and also the uh, conclusions can be uh, included in the 15 minutes presentation when we are going to have that question and answer session uh, later on. Okay, so here the 10 minutes presentation will be start on Tuesday, but not this Tuesday. It is not, it's going to start at uh, Tuesday, October the 29th after the presenter's workshop. So next Tuesday, okay, next week, I'm, I'm expecting you to have the 10 minutes draft already. And that, so that in Thursday, we sure that you that you are able to uh, deliver the presentation uh, without any troubles or problems later on. And then it will last for three days for your three minutes presentation before we are continuing with the, the, the method of how we create or how we design poster presentation so in the beginning of so in the beginning of november i will uh, send you all the uh, topics that you need to choose for your poster presentation and uh, and in the second week of november we are going to learn on how to make the poster presentation so and then the third week of November, uh, we are learn, We are going to learn about the uh, how to write CV and cover letter, which also include how to create a abstract. Okay, how to create an abstract of your uh, paper or of how of or how to make abstract of your presentation. So that in uh, so that in November the uh, November the so if Monday is the if November the fifteenth Thursday one will be on November the eighteenth so by November the eighteenth we're going to have our final presenter workshop so that next uh, so that the following week. Or the uh, or Tuesday, uh, November the twenty third, we're going to have, or we're going to start our uh, final presentation. We are going to spend four days for that. So uh, we're going to have um, we're going to have about uh, six to seven people, or six maybe six people presenting on each day. Okay six people presenting on on each session of a 15 minutes presentation and therefore uh, the order for that presentation will be determined by a certain assignment okay so in the 30th uh, week i will release an assignment that you need to fulfill so that you can have that order of your uh, 15 minute presentation so we're going to make the setting of our 15 minute presentation, just like when we have that uh, international se seminar in ITB. So uh, the set, uh, so the, the order uh, will be determined by a certain assignment that you need to have, that you need to fulfill uh, in the 30th week. What, is, what are the assignments? I will give you uh, later on uh, the, uh, the assignment for the, uh, for the upcoming uh, full presentation. Okay, and, uh, the, and then uh, as I mentioned uh, in the previous uh, occasions, the submission of your final draft is on the day of our final meeting. The final meeting will be the final meeting of our class. I guess it is going to be in December, December the second. Okay, December the second, 
2021 is the final day of your 15 minutes presentation and it will become the submission day for your full paper okay for your full paper your paper your full paper must not longer than eight pages so make it compact okay uh, make your final paper is compact with that uh, template that I already gave you in in previous lectures, and it must not and it must not exceed eight pages. Okay, so the maximum pages for your uh, full paper is only eight pages. With that, uh, uh, with that uh, template that I already gave you, so make sure that the thing that you uh, write in the final paper is concise, but uh, even though it's only eight pages, but it must contain the important information about the about the topics itself. Uh, it must have a clear description on the introduction, clear description on the method, clear description on how you collect the data, how you analyze the data, and and what is the conclusion of that study itself. Okay, and proper uh, and then uh, 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 for the uh, uh, list of reference uh, is also included on your final uh, paper uh, so that the total or the uh, final draft of your of your paper must not exceed eight pages or uh, maybe I can also make some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of adjustment so that for the main body it may, uh, uh, it, it must for the main body or the main part of your uh, full paper must not exceed eight pages, but for the reference list can be added later on into a single uh, into a one additional page that also can be uh, done. Okay, so what important what so what is uh, important is that the the uh, paper it must not exceed uh, eight pages, okay. and so. The final assignment, uh, which is basically the poster presentation, uh, will be the last uh, assignment from this class. So after you learn about the uh, methods or the theoretical aspect on how to create poster presentation, you are expected to have a poster draft and also a poster presentation video that must that must uh, that must be uh, completed at the date for your uh, uh, final uh, exam. Okay, so uh, so usually uh, when we are heading to the end of the semester, the physics uh, study program will announce the schedule of the. Uh, of the uh, final exam of the final exam including scientific communication so the date of your so the date for the scientific communication final exam will be the final date for you to submit the uh, poster presentation and also the poster video presentation okay so these are the schedule for our uh, activities for the next so we are now in week nine, so we still have roughly six weeks to go. Okay, six weeks to go, uh, and therefore we could make our time more efficient and more and uh, so that the whole the uh, assignments that needs to be done for you uh, can be done as <clears throat> efficient as possible. So. Uh, here, we already done the literature review or the paper introduction. We already done the three minutes talk, and then we're going to have the 10 minutes talk in uh, next week, Thursday. And then the uh, third presentation will be done in the uh, in uh, October, sorry, in November the 20, in November the 23rd. Okay, we still have uh, four more weeks to have, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, four, four, four more weeks, I guess, yes, four more weeks to have that final presentation. 
Well, okay, that is the uh, evaluation of your uh, three minutes presentation and also the uh, the review or the or the uh, the overview of our uh, future activities. So let us now move on to the uh, to the styles of presentation. So some of this probably you already knew when we are uh, interacting uh, in the uh, in the workshop session that we held uh, before. So here in styles in slide styles that uh, I've uploaded uh, in the Edunex uh, LMS. Uh, uh, we knew that there are three components in the presentation. First is the structure and speeds, uh, or, or the, uh, uh, the 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 words, or the or the uh, compound of uh, sentences, uh, or the accumulation of sentences and uh, words that you place into your uh, slides. And then the second one is the object or the visuals or the visual aids that you have that is including graph, uh, figures, map, animations, et cetera, and so on. And the third one is the delivery, okay? Uh, what we're going to learn on this uh, occasion is more on the visuals, okay? On the visuals, in the visual aspect of your uh, presentation. One type of visual aid that deserves reflection is the presentation slide itself. So, uh here is one example on how we design the placement of a certain object and words into our slides and uh audience will remember more when you use well designed slides so uh so make sure that well, make sure when you are designing your slide uh, the, the 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 visual aspect will not make them uh troubled with the slide that you have okay so uh you may you need to so uh so for example when we're going to have that uh so uh, i guess when the pandemic is over uh our presentation will be done again uh offline so make sure that the facility or the equipment that you have when you're going to do presentation, we'll make the presentation itself engaging. We'll make the presentation itself uh, effective, efficient, and also perfect. So, so basically, uh, how you choose the method or how you going to use a certain equipment is essential so that uh, the audience will remember the thing that you mentioned uh, uh, during your presentation, not hindered by the small things or by the by the by the uh, inconvenience that is happening due to the uh, due to the uh, lack of design of your presentation slides. So uh, here, so. Uh, so the percentage of uh, response from the audience is that uh, audience will tend to remember the thing that they hear and see, okay, more. So fifty percent. So uh, there are more people who are going to remember the thing from your presentation from the thing that they hear and see, and only a small number of people who all who will remember about the thing that they hear from your presentation so make you so make sure as i mentioned earlier so okay, as i mentioned earlier uh, your voice is in the perfect condition and your slides is also in a perfect condition because so because mistakes or a uh, figures that are not properly designed, it will make the audience a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit uh, uh, concerned with the uh, thing that you have, or they might be questioned about the, the, uh, the details or the explanation on that uh, figures that you put on the slides. Okay, so uh, make sure that you 
that your voice and also your visual aids in the perfect condition because audience will do remember about the thing that they hear and see from your uh, presentation. So the major errors that uh, presenters or uh, a new presenters do uh, during a, a certain presentation is that they, they, they show a poor choice of font style and size, which is I emphasis uh, several times in our workshop and then poor choice of color for background and text, and then too much data, too much lines of text, and no obvious conclusion. Uh, here in the scientific communication uh, class is that uh, from the literature review on a certain topic, uh, you must need to have a certain conclusion on the scientific uh, topic that you choose. Uh, for example, when you're talking about the MT, uh, application on certain geothermal sites, you need to make a conclusion that the MT can provide you information about the subsurface condition of that geothermal system, for example. That is the conclusion of your talk. So for example, when you, so in, instead of just stating that uh, MT, instead of just stating that uh, MT data can be applicable in in geothermal system, in aquifer detection, etc., and so on. The the conclusion of your talk for this class, we need to practice. It, we need to practice it, to practice so that uh, the conclusion becomes specific with the object of your research, with the object of your interest, with it, with the object of your, uh, with the topic of your selections, and so. Uh, and so uh, the the so that, so that the, the the audience will have that uh, lingering or will remember uh, the presentation that from the talk they have that conclusion that uh, certain data can be used in order to tackle that that problem etc and so on so uh, conclusion must be obvious or must be clear uh, uh, in, in in a certain presentation. Okay. okay, here are the exam here are uh, the example of a uh, certain uh, type of fonts that you choose that you could choose for your presentation. Uh, you can see the comparison here. Okay. Uh, you can see the comparison okay. uh, between the size, between the shape, sorry. So, so here uh, is a is a is a comparison of Ariel Caribri, uh, Saint Serif, and then Times New Roman until Papyrus, uh, written in the same size, uh, but it, but it obviously have a different styles. Okay, it, it obviously showing different styles of uh, words uh, written by each type of fonts. Okay, so uh, the formal one, obviously, if we're using sans serif fonts, uh, uh, this is what we use formally in a certain uh, presentation. Okay, uh, whether whereas the uh, the uh, uh, the Times New Roman, for example. It is more appropriate in the formal uh, documents, such as in papers, etc., and so on. Uh, and the uh, other words is more. It is not considered as formal, even though. Okay, even though uh, uh, sometimes when we are going to emphasize a certain aspect of our presentation. Uh, using comics, uh, using uh, fonts such as Comic Sans or Papyrus, sometimes it will be uh, it will be uh, uh, better to use that, but not for the whole text. Okay, but not for the whole presentation, uh, because uh, because the uh, we can use that different letters in order to emphasize or in order to show the uh, certain aspect of your talk, but not used as the whole uh, of uh, use, but not you, but not used as the whole text of your uh, uh, presentation because uh, it is 
more preferable in, in terms of the display of using the sans serif uh, fonts such as Arial and Calibri uh, instead of uh, using the other words. Uh, it doesn't mean that you may not use uh, Times, Times New Roman, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, be, uh, sometimes we need also to, sometimes uh, we can use Times New Roman or Comic Sans or Papyrus or any type of fonts in our presentation only for emphasizing something, only to show certain aspect as one speciality, or you want, you want to show some kind of a special aspect or, or, or a certain aspect of, of, of certain of the, the of the section okay so if you're going to show that uh, special of that specific points for example you, you may use that font but not for the whole uh not for the whole uh styles okay not not for the whole uh, slides because for the title and then uh, the small description on your uh presentation is better for you to use the sun sheriff uh, uh, fonts that 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 is more that is kind of that's kind of pleased to the eyes uh, of your audience. It makes them convenient. It makes them uh, uh, not threatened or not intimidating for somehow. Okay, so here. Uh, so here is also a, a comparison between the size of your uh, fonts. So 36 is this one, the, the one that is shown in the bottom part, and 18 point is this one. So make sure that your audience will see your presentation, your presentation slide uh, clearly, because here, as I mentioned earlier, the audience will remember the thing that you show in a presentation from what they hear and see. So uh, make sure that your voice is clear and make sure that the thing that you put in your uh, presentation slide, whether it is a, whether it is a figure or whether it's a word, et cetera, and so on, needs to be clear. So the, cho so the, cho so the choosing of uh, font type and also the size will become important because especially when you have that meeting, that is set in front of a big audience um, in a certain auditorium, the size of your phone is crucial because if you use to, uh, if you if you if you choose to use the smaller fonts, uh, and then uh, the audience that sits on the back will not see clearly the thing that you showed in the presentation. They will not remember anything. They will not. Uh, they will not. Uh, Pay attention to the thing that you present. Uh, they only hear what you present. So make sure to make the audience that also sit at the back side or at the uh, or at the uh, uh, on the last row of your presentation room can also see your uh, presentation slide that you show in the front. So choosing this right size becomes crucial. Okay, using, uh, okay, avoid using all capital letters. Okay, this is obvious. Uh, 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 this is also applies when we send message uh, in our, uh, in our uh, communicate, uh, in our text messages. Okay, uh, color, dark letter against a light uh, background. Okay, so this, are the uh, most common uh, format to use dark fonts uh, over a bright color uh, background, or you can use uh, or a dark letter against a light background are the best for smaller rooms or for teaching. Here is another uh, alternative uh, to use light letters against a dark background also work. And many expert uh, feels that dark blue or black background works best for talks in a large room, especially for a seminar room that uh, they will dim or they will make the lights of a certain seminar rooms becomes dark. 
Okay. So uh, I remember when I have that uh, Hagi annual meeting in in Lampung or in Semarang uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when they have that uh, when they have that uh, specific topic sessions, they will make the presentation room becomes dark, and therefore, uh, in order to make your audience eyes pleased with the presentation, uh, make the presentation uh, background become dark. Okay, so in order not to make them uh, tired uh, too soon when they uh, see your presentation, you could make the background of your presentation dark as the light of that room becomes darker. And the words and the uh, fonts uh, color uh, that you use for that presentation uh, is uh, using a light letter such as yellow and uh, uh, white, for example. Okay, avoid this type of uh, color, for example. Uh, Red-green combination because large fraction of the human population is red, is red-green colorblind, okay? And for even for normal people, this choice of color will make your eyes hurt. And then the antidote for PowerPoint poisoning, okay, choose your color carefully, okay? Uh, here, an example given here, if you have a red or orange uh, background, it is not good to use yellow letters, okay? It makes our eyes uh, hurt, but tired easily. Uh, and if you are using a black or a dark uh, background, and it's better for you to use a yellow or white uh, font color, but make sure that the size is proportional. Make the size can be seen by people who sit in the back. Uh, and also the same applies for those of you who are going to present in a small room or a, in a seminar room which lights is turned on or the, 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 the brightness of your rooms is a little bit high. So, uh, using the white background and uh, dark uh, font color uh, also applies for that type of presentation. And make sure the size, make sure the size can be readable, okay, by those who are sitting on the back of the conference room. Okay, so do and don't in the layout. Keep the layout and style as consistent as possible. Uh, every slide should have a heading. Try to limit text block to not more than two lines. And then the reason for limiting text block to two lines is that when the text block goes on and on forever, people in the audience are going to have to make a huge effort to read the text, which will preclude from paying attention to your what's saying. Every time you lose their focus, your presentation will suffer. Okay, even in this lecture, when we, when we teachers if you too much text in our presentation, it will make them. It will make you bored. It will make you tired, for, 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 for certain. So, uh, uh, so uh, learn from that. Uh, if you're going to talk into a certain seminar, which has that time limitation, uh, may, uh, putting too many sentences in your slide will, we will hurt the, the eyes of your audience. And, and when you have that uh, defense of your final project, the eyes and the mood of your examinee will become decreasing, okay? The focus will be lost when you have too many texts, when, when you have too many sentences in your presentation, okay? Even in the lecture itself, okay? Even in this lecture, I, I, am, I, I, I do feel that me as, a, as your teacher or as your, uh, and as a, or as the audience as well, Oh, I feel also that if I put too many texts, uh, the, the focus will be lost, obviously. But here in the lecture, since the information that is given in each uh, class needs to be specific, okay, and the time limitation for uh, lecture is, uh, is relatively longer than a certain uh, than a circuit presentation. So uh, putting many sentences or many information into one slide, something is that 
unavoidable. So, uh, so, so please make sure that when you're going to have that uh, 15 minute presentation in a certain seminar, or you're going to have 20 minute presentation for your defense, make sure that your slides is designed properly with limited amount of sentences <coughs> with uh, figures that are uh, helping the audience to understand the process of your uh, work or helping the audience to understand the things that you're working on. Okay, so make sure. Okay, uh, next one is often effective to unveil a list of point by point. Okay, so, uh, so use bullet points like this one is uh, can be helpful for your presentation slide and do not use uh, do not overuse animation so uh, if so because sometimes uh, too many animation will make your presentation slide runs uh, slower and uh, make sure that the animation is only there to help you to emphasize something to emphasize a point on your uh, topic of presentation this example, for example, to using too many unnecessary uh, sounds uh, for your scientific uh, meeting, for example, it is not okay for that. If you're going to present in front of a uh, elementary students or a kindergarten students or kindergarten uh, yeah students, uh, or you you want to make some kind of attention from your juniors, for example, then using animation with sound, etc. and so on, probably is okay. But for a formal setting such as events and also uh, in a certain seminar, it is not necessary. Sometimes it will make the, the, the audience feel bothered with you. Okay, uh, next, uh, do and don't in the layout. Do not cram too much figure in your slides. Uh, try your best to include a simple image on every set. Okay, the so simplicity is preferable instead of uh, putting too much slides or putting sorry not putting too much but putting too much uh, figures or graph into your slides. Please avoid that. Ah, okay. So the, here is the example. You put so many figures and letters sentences. Yeah, so it will make the audience uh, confused and overwhelmed with the content. Of it. Okay, here an example of a simple uh, design. Okay, so this, so you may find that this one is more uh, simple, and uh, and the presenter is a have more chance to explain orderly about the process that they have here in the figure. Okay, uh, here is the layout. Be generous with space, and you need to have one topic per slide, or at most two slides. Okay, so to conclude, uh, slide style and design aids the audience. You need to be careful with the choosing of your background color, of your font type, and be generous with space. Okay, not putting too much information uh, for your scientific talk. Uh, as long as it is not for lecture purpose, uh, please uh, be aware of that, so that uh, the audience will not get tired from your from your talk. Because because uh, whenever they lost focus from your talk, it will be uh, it will make your presentation becomes uninteresting. Okay, there are more information here. Uh, uh, in the slide design. Uh, here is talking about the structure, the placement of the title, etc., and so on. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that too much because I guess that you that you may uh, learn about this uh, independently. Uh, and, and then we can also learn from doing from our interaction in, uh, in, in the workshop, but make sure that you follow this, make sure that you see this before, uh, make them as a reference or make them some kind of a, 
uh, make them as a starting point for your presentation design so that whenever we have that workshop in next week, your layout for your 10 minutes presentation will be uh, better. It okay, will be better compared to the thing that you designed for your three minutes presentation. Since you knew that the choices of words, uh, sorry, the choices of font type, the choices of font size, the choice of color, etc., and so on, will make the will make the audience focus to the presentation itself. Okay, and uh, and uh, make make the mistakes that is happening during a presentation so minimal, it is also one big effort that you will need to uh, do uh, for the completion of your uh, 10 minutes presentation. Okay, uh, uh, they also gave you some kind of example, what need to do and do not do, not do for example, et cetera, and so on. Uh, and there are many <clears throat> examples uh, given here on how to, uh, make some kind of a process, etc. So how to make some kind of a, a flow chart, etc. And so on, so that the so that the flow of your presentation become more uh, enjoyable and can be uh, enjoyable and also understandable by the audience and also by the uh, attendees of your presentation. Well, okay, I think those are the. Uh, lecture material that I want to uh, show you today. Uh, so I am just going to stop share here. So uh, next Thursday, I'm going to talk about the uh, software that might help you in order to make uh, uh, better writings, for example, and then and then uh, how we import citation, etc., and so on. And, uh, and I think I've already uh, put several uh, materials in Edunex <clears throat> that show you about how to use a certain uh, software such as uh, Grammarly, etc., and so on, in order to improve the quality of your paper writing, also your uh, presentation design. Okay, those are the things that I need to address for this week. Thank you for all of your attention. Uh, again, in scientific communication class, sometimes we can be a little bit theoretical in certain in certain lectures, uh, but, it, it, but it is uh, very unavoidable because we need to learn about it from the basics uh, before we are moving on to the workshop on how we on how we uh, design the presentation itself, on how we write the article itself. So make sure that you access all of those materials given in the Edunex before you are designing your own paper and side presentation. Okay, uh, I think we can conclude our uh, class today. I'm going to stop the recording. <clears throat>